Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is June 4th and today we're going to take a look at this moisture pushing on shore across the region today. You can see the SPC does have a general thunderstorm risk, mainly Olympia South through the Willamette Valley, some of the Cascades in the Oregon coastal range there. You can see some of these little mesoscale features. If you look closely there, you can see a little bit of a spin that's making landfall there just south of Seaside. I'll show you why that's occurring here in just a second. And we'll take a look at what we can expect on and through the next few days. We're getting some pretty good precipitation rates around the region here across Pacific Northwest. Good for drought concerns and good for summer fire concerns. And of course, as always, we'll take a look at the rest of the nation briefly, and we'll take a look at our extended forecast as well here coming up. So let's go ahead and take a look at the water vapor imagery here, and you can see this system as it comes into the Oregon coast, best instability again, Olympia southward, chance of a thunderstorm. Tomorrow, we're going to reintroduce a chance of a thunderstorm even across the Puget Sound. We'll take a look at that as well. But you can see this atmospheric river stretching all the way back across the Pacific and rushing into the Oregon and California coast today. Taking a look at the GO-16 around the rest of the country briefly, you can see the normal tr uh, sea breeze action here over the Florida panhandle or peninsula, sorry, is going to be disrupted. They've got a tropical system out here. It's been causing some pretty heavy rains. Go ahead and check out some of those videos on Twitter and whatnot if you want to check out some of the flooding that's been going on down there, even some severe thunderstorms and even a tornado threat with some of these cells as they move on shore. So heads up if you're traveling to Florida down there. Now you can see around the rest of the country, we do still have some flood watches across portions of Northeast Oregon, Southeast Washington. You can see this tropical storm uh, warnings across much of the open water here uh, around Florida and on the eastern seaboard. Now checking out the convective outlook, you can see that thunderstorm potential today. And you can see there is a chance of a tornado possible there through portions of Tornado Alley there. Not a big outbreak by any means. So and for tomorrow, another tornado threat going on across Sunday. Portions of Nebraska down into Kansas. And then as we go on to day three, actually let's back up back to day two again if we would. And you can see this thunderstorm threat reintroduced across Portland, Seattle. Just including the Puget Sound as we go on through the day tomorrow. Now, taking a look at SeaTac here, this is yesterday's temperature of 62 degrees, about 7 degrees below normal here. And you can see we're averaging about 69 this time of year. And as we get to about, what, June 7th, we average 70 degrees here at SeaTac. So maybe we will get up towards that in the extended here. Let's take a look at that here in a moment. And as we look on a little bit further into June, check that out. 2021, 102, 104 and 108 when Seattle's greatest heat wave ever, and much of the Pacific Northwest suffered its great heat wave during this time period as well. So we are not that far off from being to the year anniversary of the greatest heat wave ever here in much of the Pacific Northwest. You can see Medford, Oregon National Weather Service calling for a wet weekend ahead. They've got a good beat on that. You can see Pendleton, Oregon calling for that too. They highlight the excessive rainfall rate areas as well as thunderstorm threat going through the weekend. And they highlight this wet weekend here, showing the jet stream nicely on this graphic here. Just plowing into the Pacific Northwest, keeping us our cool La Nina spring. Actually, we're into meteorological summer now. Uh, so we're now getting into summertime activity here. And looking here for Spokane, talking about the wet weekend, cool and wet, chance of thunderstorms, just some breezy winds, really high is only into the 60s. And you can see the excessive rainfall outlook does extend just mainly Olympia South today, Oregon coastal range, some of the Cascades into Northern California and up into Montana, extreme Eastern Washington, Idaho Panhandle as well. And day two, it does include Eastern Washington, Northeast Oregon again, as the system continues to move through the area. And we're going to take a look at precipitation totals now here. This is the wrap. And as we go through, this is this evening, and as we go through Sunday, you'll notice these totals really start to pick up here. And actually, let's push this out to 15Z. The wrap on 15Z goes out much further. But here we go into Sunday morning. Look at these precipitation totals building up really everywhere. It gets fairly wet. Maybe the Columbia Basin gets spared a little bit. And you can see some areas in the lee of the higher terrain there for British Columbia getting a little bit less precipitation. But you can see some of these precip totals here uh, just southern washington cascades over three inches southern oregon coastal range there that's what three over three inches there and yeah so this is a pretty good rainmaker across the region this is the nam 3km comparing to the wrap here you can see it really highlighted cascades south olympics vancouver island higher train of bc and the north cascades get some pretty good precipitation out of this system as this atmospheric river moves to the area on 
as we go on and through Monday here, you'll see some of these totals just really high amounts. This is more like a winter type uh, scenario versus something you get in early summer. Now taking a look at why we might see that mesoscale feature moving on shore. This is just kind of a little fun thing to do here. You can see we have southeasterly winds this morning. Well, this is about 10 a.m. And as you see these southwesterlies kind of surge in here, that's probably why that little mesoscale low formed on there. It's these southwesterlies surging in to some southeasterlies and just cause a little bit of a spin there that we could notice on the Doppler radar. So just kind of an interesting little thing that I like to look at sometimes as you're watching the Doppler radar, trying to figure out why certain things are happening. But you can see through the day today, you know, we might get a decent day across some of the Puget Sound up into the 60s. You can see how Oregon cloud cover used to be a little bit chillier. Some of the eastern portions of the state warming up a bit. And as we go through Sunday, you'll notice that we stay a little bit colder for Seattle. And yeah, we're just here into early summer, but we're still not getting up to these average temperatures this time of year. Now let's take a look at the extended forecast here. Here's the European showing this troughing directing that atmospheric river through our area here, and then it reintroduces some troughing out into the extended here. This would be on Tuesday night. Let's go ahead and back up to yesterday afternoon so we can see this go out a little bit further here. This goes into Wednesday. You see the Gulf of Alaska trough is strong. The ridge is flat here, so we're going to continue to get moisture brought into the region much the Pacific Northwest. But then you got to watch just how strong this ridge is going to build. It could bring some warmer temperatures into Oregon here later next week and even bring a nice day or two across some of the portions of the Pacific Northwest. So we'll watch this closely. As you can see, this persistent troughing does redevelop here in the European as we go on in through the extended again. Now checking out the GFS. Good agreement as usual in the short term that trough offshore here. And then you can see this ridge start to build in a bit. Stays mainly to the east really of the Cascades is a strong troughing Gulf of Alaska is going strong and the GFS here comes that ridge now it looks like it's a little bit further east especially with previous runs here and you can see this troughing really just set up shop over the Pacific Northwest I mean look at this this is just pretty extreme we would stay much below normal here on in through next week and into early next week as well so Pretty good agreement generally that there will be a ridge somewhere nearby, but it looks like a pretty strong gradient. It's a pretty strong Gulf of Alaska troughing does remain. This is the Canadian model here too. This is this morning's. So let's see if this goes out all the way. As we go through into Tuesday, we might get a nice day around the region here. Transient Ridge sets up shop there. Is this Gulf of Alaska trough still going? But look at the Canadian. Builds up some pretty good ridging across the Pacific Northwest. So there is some model discrepancy as we go on in through later next week as the Gulf of Alaska troughing is going. Decent gradient, probably bringing some clouds into the area. But just how much of the area will get warm with a ridge like this, we'll have to wait and see because as you can see over the last couple of days things have been changing and as we go on to the extended you can see another good trough setting up off the coast of western north america here on the canadian model now this is the weekly uh, uh, the european i thought i'd play this for you this is a day at a time here and this was actually brought out on the night of june 1st but just kind of shows that troughing and not much in the way of ridging across the area and this goes all the way into late june check this out and this is kind of normal for this time of year that pacific high usually sets up shop here across the north pacific ocean here and so it doesn't tell us that much as far as specific forecasts but we'll look at some of the outlooks here on the the noaa page and you can see six to ten day temperature outlook a little bit above average temperature uh precipitation near normal temperatures uh you know give or take a little bit that, that could be perceived as a little bit off we might remain below normal here in the next couple of days but 8 to 14 days look at below normal a little bit above for northern washington but you can see this ridge highlighting setting up shop here that's kind of the highlight of that ridge across some of the intermountain west here so we'll have to watch this day by day and see how this goes but this is for this was may 19th it does say that we have a slight chance of some above average temperatures july august september across pacific northwest and not necessarily a wetter signal either you can see that monsoon signal there for maybe a little bit above active monsoon season across portions of arizona there now this is for next year look at how far some of these forecasts go out this is for april may june of 2023 we should be coming out of la nina period by this point and you can see that we're probably going to have much different conditions next spring on into early summer versus this year. It's a pretty good bet. Even though any one forecast of any month at this time range is going to be completely worthless, it's a good bet that we will come out of this cooler spring pattern that we have this year next spring. So something to look forward to a year from now. 
But yeah, enjoy this precipitation coming over the region. This is early summer, atmospheric river. A lot of precip falling across the area. Chance of thunderstorms today, mainly Olympia South. And then you'll be, have a chance of thunderstorms through the day tomorrow. Puget Sound and Portland included in that. So yeah, feeling a little bit under the weather today. Um, but I thought I'd go ahead and do this video anyway. I feel better when I'm just kind of doing my thing here. And I'll probably go take a nap here coming up. But anyway... I will we'll do this again tomorrow. We'll take a look at the extended forecast and I will talk to you guys later.